Hello everybody. Today we're going to discuss about how programmers can use AI chats right inside the ID. So, move on. Before we move deeper to the topic, I need to uh, tell you what the IDs currently support AI tooling. In my experience, I'm using Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio and Rider from JetBrains. And almost all of the topics that I'll cover today uh, will be relevant to these ideas. Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code from Microsoft and all of the IDs from JetBrains. So let's start. When I'm talking about AI tooling and ID, I mean conversational AI. So this is like a chat GPT, but integrated in your ID. And what we have here for today, we have, first of all, GitHub Copilot chat. It costs approximately $10 and including in GitHub Copilot subscription. Uh, and GitHub Copilot chat pretty good works in Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. And also it works in uh, JetBrains IDEs, but with some um, edge cases. Speaking easier in Visual Studio Code and in Visual Studio, GitHub Copilot chat much more better understand the context of your project. Regardless, uh, in JetBrains ID, it's a little bit worse. But for the family of JetBrains ID, we have JetBrains AI Assistant. It is also conversational AI made by JetBrains, and this conversational AI can be integrated with your JetBrains ID. It costs approximately 20 bucks uh, monthly, so you can buy it and use it. Third one, and my most lovely one, it is MachineNet. Not all of you know about MachineNet. MachineNet is a, it is a startup. The guys provide really cool conversational AI ID integrated tool that really great understand the whole of context of your project. This tool works only in JetBrains family IDs but you can uh, test it, you can try it right now. Just check the link in the description below. And number one case, most important ones from my side, it is to use AI assistant as your pair programmer assistant. So there are um, pretty familiar situation for every programmer. Uh, when you need to start your project or you need to start some task or proof of concept, you need to make some boilerplate initial code. You need to uh, create initial classes. You need to imagine initial architecture and all of this uh, tasks can can be cause of procrastination you know and these tasks can spend not even hours but even days from pretty skilled programmer and here conversational ai can be really helpful you can just copy and paste your description of the task and ask ai to start writing a code instead of you and then when AI provide you some example of this initial code, you can work with it. For AI, it is task for five seconds. For you, it can be task one week long and more. Second important use case uh, is to use AI Assistant as a search engine. So for now, you can uh, search for any information related to programming right inside your ID without using Google, without using Stack Overflow. From my perspective, I'm using uh, AI last one year and I noticed that during this year I didn't visit Stack Overflow at all. But here, here is some tricky picky point. You need to remember that AI systems, AI assistant can hallucinate and can uh, provide you outdated information. This is related to architecture of uh, neural networks that AI based on. And uh, this is because training data that AI used also can be a little bit outdated. Whenever you use code that provided by AI systems, do not afraid to check all of libraries 
that this AI assistant um, recommend to you. Third really important use case is to explain stack trace and errors. Yeah, while you're programming, uh, especially when you're programming with some new libraries, with some new frameworks, with some new languages, it is pretty usual situation when you, when you get some error or, I don't know, bug, and you don't know how to figure out it. You need to a lot of searching, a lot of googling, and for now you can just copy and paste error message into AI chat and get a re really uh, powerful, really useful explanation of your error. And moreover, AI assistant can, e can even provide you a possible solution for mitigate this, this error to do not get this error again. Tip number four, AI assistant can be extremely helpful while you're learning new technology or even new programming language. So if you are a skilled programmer in some programmer languages, for example, in JavaScript, you can use AI assistant to provide you information in the same knowledge sphere in different languages. For example, you don't know how to uh, works generics in C sharp, but you know how it works in Java. So you can just ask AI assistant, try to yeah, insight uh, your IDE to explain how it works in uh, C sharp and even provide an examples of code. This is the most delicious hot dog in Poland. Just go to Orlean fuel station and ask hot dogs, parówkam and serum. Hot dogs, parówkam, serum. Bellissimo. Use case number four is to converting your code from one language to another language. And it is not about just uh, translation from English to Russian, for example. It is about translation from, I don't know, JavaScript or Kotlin. If you don't want to learn new language and you need to make small piece of code for your project on, lang lang on programming language that you don't know, you can write it on your familiar language and then ask AI assistant to convert this code to needed language really awesome possibility tip number six is to explanation the code so if you are working with legacy code or you working with project that was written not by you but some programmers who are not working uh, at the company now you can ask about it your ai assistant just copy and paste this part of code and ask what this code do in my experience all of ai assistants really good works in explanation of code so don't hesitate to use those systems in this way next use case pretty similar to previous one but it is not about code it is about documentation conversational ai assistance really good in understanding of and documentation of the project so if you have uh, some kind of documentation let it be a swagger documentation or a bunch of readme files just uh, say AI conversational where this documentation placed in your project and ask everything you want about functionality of your application based on this documentation. Really helpful case. Moreover, you even can just copy and paste documentation inside your AI chat. Let's say place documentation in context window and ask AI chat about the stuff from this documentation. Tip number seven, my favorite one, it is creation of after commit message. So whenever you're working with GitHub or GitLab or other uh, system of version control, system of your code version control, you can <laughs> use this small functionality, for example, in Visual Studio Code with GitHub Copilot chats. It is really convenient way to not waste your time for creation this commit message because when you have a lot of changes, it can take a lot of minutes to imagine how this commit message should, should be named. And AI Assistant can do it in several seconds. So it is my lovely use case and do not hesitate to use AI Assistants in this way. If you are using GitHub Copilot, Chat, or JetBrains AI, or MachineNet, just read the documentation uh, for get knowledge about all of the possibilities that this tooling providing to you. Because, for example, GitHub Copilot chat have, and JetBrains AI and MachineNet, all of them have really good 
integration into IDE. So it is not only conversational AI text box or chat box. It is also a lot of possibilities through contextual menu. It is also a lot of possibilities through key combination. And if you know about all of these possibilities, you can be really productive programmer. Use case is the most underestimated from developers. Uh, it is not a secret that almost all developers hate to write unit tests. Because unit tests are almost totally is a boilerplate. 80 or 90 percent of unit tests cover just simple things that you can delegate to AI assistant. If you don't write in unit test with AI assistant, I don't know why. Just start doing that. It can uh, save a lot of hours of your time and help you do not waste your time and be more productive developer. So that's all use cases that I want to share with you today. If you want more use cases or you want to discuss particular a use case that I don't not cover in this video, just leave the comment below. And also press like button, share this video, subscribe to channel and see you in the next vlogging video from me. Thank you. Bye.